so let it be written, so let it be done. This is Tabletop Terrors. You're using one big bad for your campaign, and you probably have been for as long as you've been playing D&D. We all have in most cases. But what if instead you fueled your campaign by building an awesome rogues gallery of multiple villains doing multiple things, and then you just let chaos reign and the players try to figure it out. Jeff, tell us a little more about how this is working for you. Yeah, so this is actually advice that I got from, I don't remember who specifically gave it to me a while back, um, but it was just they put out a little post talking about this, and it was like such an immediately fascinating idea to me. Um, and the sort of the very basic level concept is like, instead of trying to prep your campaign by like writing a bunch of specific scenarios and then sort of trying to like find ways that it sort of all ties into like the main enemies or whatever of the game, to start your prep off by making just a handful of really cool villains who are all part of the same general association and then use those people to cause conflict in the world, which will generate the story and the situations for you automatically. It's a lot more, it's a lot easier to prep that way because you have so much at your fingertips. And honestly, for me at least, it's a lot more fun <laughs> to do it that way um, because you get to use all these cool people that you made and you sort of already have these ideas fresh of like, oh, this villain's gonna do this and this villain's gonna do that. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit about, uh, about a game that I'm running right now um for it's a home group that i'm gming over right now um and i've basically just started making a little list of villains uh and sort of how they're going to relate to the game uh so i have a, a wizard and she uses enchantment magic to like control other people or like to reanimate you know corpses like it's not necromancy it's like this other form of like enchantment to basically puppeteer you know the the dead uh, and they've been disguising it as like a plague that's affecting the city when in reality they're you know poisoning these people and then using this magic to to basically do this um like i just made that person so then when they got to the city i had just ideas for days like just the sheets and sheets of like these are encounters that they could have. These are problems that they could run into. This is the encounter with this person. Like, what would their little hideout be like? And you, because I know like who this person is and sort of this vivid idea of who they are, so many questions about how I should run that situ that scenario are answered for me already because I've made that person. Uh, you know, and then I also have this other you know person who hasn't come into the game yet, but I know he's going to be there somewhere down the line. It's sort of this like dark cleric sort of guy where he's sort of this mysterious spellcaster who uses holy magic but he does so nefariously i, I don't know how that is going to gel with the, the, the world lore yet but it's just i like the idea so i know somewhere down the line you know suddenly a city is being like like plagues and miracles are like affecting their city like biblical style or you know, whatever and then suddenly like We've, we've had all these crazy occurrences of, you know, fire raining from the sky and insects plaguing our farmland. Like, what's going on? What's going on? That guy is going on. Like, <laughs> problem solved. So I have a list of, like, right now four or five of these people. You know, I'll probably get it up to seven or eight sort of around. But that's the sort of basic idea. Just make a couple of really thematic villains who have, like, their own unique approaches to causing carnage. And then you'll have a set of problems uh, and villains heading those problems for the next 30 sessions, you know? And yeah, it's just, it's been a really fun way for me to prep. Uh, that's a lot more engaging and a lot more exciting to me than just like trying to write out individual scenarios that always have to find some way to connect to the bigger story. And just like, well, all that's answered for me now. Um, and it's a lot of fun to make. So you know who's been doing this successfully for like 80 plus years? Comic books. Um, if you look at DC and Marvel especially are themed around this because they're superhero comics. Um, and, and there's this really cool circular effect that happens. Okay. So first start by like what Jeff is saying. So what's some practical advice? Google Batman's rogues gallery because there's a good mix of power. 
You might even throw in some other ones from like Superman, but you know, you're talking this like mid level to lower kind of thing and then do what we call reskinning or just like changing them. So, uh, you know, hey, all these people are kind of going crazy and they're seeing their nightmares in their waking hours and all this other stuff. Well, it's your version of the Scarecrow. Don't worry. No one's going to care. At the worst, they'll go, oh, like Scarecrow from Batman. Awesome. Um, You have your Joker, just someone who's doing – just this is your great excuse for like random chaotic acts that are like, what? Um, So then – you have, and obviously do your own homework. You can use any rogues gallery from anime, from whatever source you want to, and then check this out. It starts by them, and then as Jeff used those examples, like thematically taking action. But it builds this really cool weapon you have so that if you're like, ah, oh, I need someone who would be doing X, you can also reverse engineer it. Be like, oh, the perfect person for that would be the Riddler. So that's what comics are now is this really cool um, tapestry of pulling in people at the right time that makes sense for the situation that makes you go, oh, that's perfect. That character would do that, be it hero or villain. Uh, and then the best part is that your research can actually just be reading comics, watching comic book movies, and just like immersing yourself in other stuff. So I love that idea and am absolutely going to be using it for some upcoming campaigns that I have. I really like this idea as well. Um, and, and to even uh, broaden it further, right? Uh, you know, Jeff mentions this rogues gallery. He's taken something in the world and said, no, I'm going to decide what has to be, what I definitely want. You know, I want this person that has this crazy power. You got to do the fun part of creating a cool thing with the lady with the crazy power, even as far as deciding it was a special kind of necromancy, right? That's important. That having that thing and then you know where the players are and what they're trying to do you you're just taking things that exist in the world and going okay what would happen what things would have to happen if this person's there they're puppeting these bodies you know like that's just true in a sense you get to offload the work somewhere else you get to make up really cool fun stuff and then that just gives you a bunch of lenses to look through to say well what would it be what would it have to be you know but instead of a rogues gallery imagine you had three different factions trying to take over the world one uses a subterfuge, one is all, you know, pure, um, uh, can't think of a word, like aggression, and, and one is more guile, which in this case, I guess, is different than subterfuge. The idea is, depending on which faction is doing the thing that the players are involved in, it just colors everything. Well, they'd be more subterfuge -y. What does that mean? I don't know. Let's figure it out. That's playing role-playing games, right? So um, I just really love this idea of kind of finding an easy, fun thing to make up a bunch of, or, you know, some of. And then just allowing that to kind of drive what you do because you don't have to make up every cool specific instance. You already made the one cool thing. That's what's making everything cool. Plus, I mean, maybe this is just me, but isn't making cool villains like the most fun part of GMing a campaign anyway? So it just gives you an excuse to do it a lot. So works for me. Yeah, and, and like kind of think about your whatever region you're playing in. It, it, you know, if the players are local... This also makes it a lot easier, but you can get creative and make this work wherever they happen to be. So I'm just thinking most of the examples I used take place, they take place centrally in something like Gotham City or, you know, that kind of thing. But Superman is everywhere because he is high level. All of the threats aren't necessarily in Metropolis because they're higher threats. So these can be things that recur and reappear and, you know. He's always fighting Brainiac somehow. Thanos is always popping up, you know. And so there's all different power levels. So that's the other thing I was going to mention is be sure that you sort of stagger your power levels all the way down from, you know, what Daredevil could fight and the players are at lower level up to maybe building up to a Thanos or a Dark Side or one of those. So um, I'm going to, I'm really going to dig into this and uh, I'm excited. Plus, it's a, as Tim was saying, it's a really cool way to sort of continue development of these villains rather than just like, all right, we killed this guy, he's gone. You know, if you can find, and you know, you, ne you never want to railroad this too hard as the GM, but if you can find ways for these villains to continue to come back and you get to see them progress along with the player. So maybe the Necromancer at first, they're just reanimating a, a little skeleton or whatever out of the cemetery, you know, and that's enough to spook, a, a, you know, 
a farm village to higher level one adventurers or whatever. And then suddenly you're level 10 and they're like summoning ghosts and spirits. And like, they've like totally like they've upped their game too. And you sort of get to see all this happen. So yeah, um, it was revolutionary advice that I was given. And it's like, it's how I plan all my stuff now going forward. Just cause it's just fun. All right. So in the comments below, tell us what rogues gallery, as many as you want, like, whether it's one rogue up to however many. Um, and you can even direct us at different properties. Oh, this anime or this whatever, this video game has the coolest rogues gallery. Uh, pro tip, you can also combine them. It's not like you got to use one thing from one place. Uh, and then uh, just if you like this kind of video, we're Tabletop Terrors. We're all about having fun, being creative, and of course, tabletop games. So uh, consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell. And if you want to see some more in-depth conversations about this kind of stuff, but us actually putting words to a page and brainstorming uh, and some of the games we write, check out our Patreon as well. Uh, but in the meantime, I guess let's end things with the Tabterian Toast. May you mend the first break. May you kill the first snake. May you conquer everything you undertake. <sighs> Slancha. So yeah, we hold on. The, so the Jeff, yeah, yeah, so Jeff, you said you had a this was described to you using uh, Metal Gear Solid villains, but you couldn't remember them. So what, what are what are they? Do you remember? Well, yeah, well, that's what that's what reminded me of this topic idea. It was like Tim mentioned Metal Gear Solid earlier when we were talking about like video ideas and stuff. Uh, I don't even remember why, uh, but it reminded me of like there's all these cool like enemies because like Metal Gear Solid Three was the one that I really came up on. It was the one that I played first and most. Um, and I was trying to remember any of the names and just none of them were coming to me. So it's like, there's the guy with like the bees or whatever. And then there's some dude with a the flamethrower. There's like a sniper somewhere in there. Just like, I don't know what these guys' names are, but that's how memorable the concept is, is I can remember like all those people. I don't remember their names, but I remember what they did and like how they were. Oh, there's like the weird guy with like the river of the dead or whatever too, that was in there too. Just like... All these like really cool villains. Um, yeah, but I don't know what their names are. It's like weapon animal. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually, yeah. I mean, in three yeah. they were better about it, but the one of the guys is before he's revolver ocelot, but he's weapon animal revolver ocelot. Like that's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great.